Welcome to the 85th episode of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and alongside me, I have my co-host, and a man fighting for his life because he was falsely accused of killing his wife, Adrian Pinter. How does it go, sir? How does it go? General Kenobi, it goes quite well. How are you, Simon Eady? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I don't know if you noticed there, but I took a little pause just before my last name. I was like, what is my name again? Simon Dennis Eady. Who are you, man? As a person, who are you? Uh, uh, that's a deep question. That's a little bit too deep uh, of a question to, to begin the episode mm-hmm. with. So I don't know if I want to answer that right now. But how was your day today? How was your day yesterday? How was your day for this last past week? Because we don't talk outside this podcast. And I'm very uh-uh. curious to see how, you're, how you've been doing, how you've been holding up. Oh, Simon Eady. I've been, uh, I've been doing quite well, actually. Um, oh. You know, I'm, okay. uh, I'm in a new okay. living space. So oh. I'm actually recording in a new new area entirely, which is a little bit odd. It's it's interesting. So uh, I don't know if it, if anything's going to sound off or whatever. Every everything seems to be good, but you never know. So I am in like a new area, uh, way more space to myself, which is wonderful. I've got a living room. I got a little kitchen area, like a full kitchen actually, like stove, all that good stuff. I've got my bedroom. I got an extra guest room. I got two bathrooms. It's all mine, baby. It's all mine. Got a little mm. fireplace. Well, fireplace. Mm-hmm. Jeez, Louise. I'm living luxury list. It's always luxury. It's always something in this town. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. All right. Well, yeah. that's. Uh, I'm happy for you. That sounds great. Yeah, but how, how was your week, man? What did you get up to? What's new in 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 Simon's view? Zoo. Zoo oh. would have made way more sense. That's a lot better one. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, things are good. Things are good. The, the puppy's good. The kitty's good, you know? Mm-hmm. They're, they're living, living at large. And uh, I don't really have much to say. I feel like, again, I've been stuck inside. I don't do a lot. I mm-hmm. play video games. I watch the odd movie. I watch TV shows, mm-hmm. as you know, as, as the audience should figure, mm-hmm. considering they're watching a film and TV podcast. Actually, they're listening to it because we don't have much in the way of video on Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. But Adrian, I did also read the news. And uh, there's always a few little news stories, little tiny ones that mm-hmm. I like to pepper in in the beginning of the show because... Because they're, they're interesting and weird. And mm-hmm. uh, this one's a weird one. Spider-Man No Way Home is making its streaming debut on Stars, on Network Stars, Cable Network Stars, which is very weird because I thought that Sony, who controls the rights to Spider-Man and Spider-Man No Way Home, mm-hmm. I thought they made a deal with Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Like so we I, literally talked about that. So. Yeah. I don't understand what that deal is now. Mm-hmm. Based on the fact that it's coming to stars first, like Spider-Man No Way Home, which yeah. is obviously a very coveted property considering how much money it's made mm-hmm. at the box office. Who knows when it will actually leave theaters considering it's still going hot mm-hmm. in theaters. But yeah. It hasn't even had its like Chinese release, which is wild. Like the China release yet. Whoa. That's crazy. They could mm-hmm. – I'm not going to say that they're going to beat Avengers Endgame, but it would be interesting if it, got, if it got, even got close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's wild, yeah. man. It's it's doing incredibly well. But yeah, it, it's so weird that it's releasing on Stars. Uh, just to clarify, that's Stars with a Z or a Z if you're in uh, America, and um, like that's not like the additional subsidy or like the additional like sort of program on Disney Plus. To clarify, like that's not like Star. It's that network television show, like you or sorry, television network that you mentioned, Stars. Which is yeah, it's just shocking to me because yeah, we literally talked about it on this show that. Sony did make a deal with Netflix for Netflix to have the streaming rights to like their movies for what was it like a few years? Was it like a three year deal or some, something like that? I, I can't remember the exact time frame. So they have some kind of deal, but it's not like exclusive for like three deal, three years or anything like that. Like they're supposed to be, I think it's Netflix first and then Disney plus. It's like, I think six month intervals is mm-hmm. what I, I understood, but we obviously misunderstood and I'm not exactly sure what the deal is. But yeah. uh, the most articles that I was kind of reading talking about this were like, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is coming to streaming soon, but it's not coming to where you think, Netflix or Disney+. Plus. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I thought because I thought that's what the announcement was. So the obviously the details of this deal are, uh, I don't know, yeah. unknown to me. Dude, I, I literally wouldn't guess stars 
in probably my first 10 guesses realistically like i'm just like just thinking about all the streaming services with like paramount plus and you know hbo max whatever all that sort of stuff like the stars would would have i would have probably never brought it up to be honest with you so uh, those articles aren't fully wrong because yeah i would never guess that sort of shit it's it's so weird stars has some pretty good content i mean like they got outlander and uh you know they they've had in the past i, I watched uh, the black sales yeah. i watched spartacus which i love i love that show blind spotting is a show that's on there that mm-hmm. i'm sure you wanted to watch but you didn't yeah i never got around to that so that's a thing it's a show based on that yeah film mm-hmm. oh Quick aside, sorry, that, that just kind of reminded me of something because uh, you brought up a show that I wanted to watch. We talked about a few episodes ago uh, that we want to watch Alex Garland's like devs show. Yes, yes. Yes, we do. It's on Disney Plus, like through Star. That was not on there before. Okay, so it's- It couldn't have been. That must be new. It's a recent edition. Okay. Yes. Because yeah, I was, I was scrolling through Disney the other day. Disney Plus, I actually watched a movie on there like through Star. So I was like, man, there's actually a lot of shit on here. And then, yeah, I like scrolled through. Devs is on there. Atlanta Season 2 is on there now, too. Oh. So like, I definitely want to watch that. There's some good wow. content on there, man. That's really good. Yeah. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah, the, the What that. We Do in the Shadows FX show is on there as well. So I'm, I'm That is on there. That I noticed. Yeah. But Devs, I didn't notice. So Yeah, so I'm- Good I'm, on you for telling me about that. Oh, yeah. Wow. I just looked at the Apple TV mm-hmm. Plus app or the Apple TV app, which kind of gives you a, a rundown of what's available and where, mm-hmm. except for Netflix. Which yeah. I think we talked about before, the fact that the Apple TV app tells you, again, like if devs, let's say you type in devs mm-hmm. into the Apple TV app on your iPhone or iPad or whatever, it will tell you where it's airing currently, which streaming service is on, except for Netflix. Yeah. It's just so frustrating. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Netflix is hurting from this. Guaranteed, they may not understand how it's hurting them because I don't think they'd even have the data to back that up because they're not on that in that platform. But I feel like I watch less Netflix because of this. I don't know about mm-hmm. you, but I think I definitely do. Cause I use that service constantly. Yeah. Me too. And man. just like, yeah, I don't know. I, I just am disappointed. There's other things you can watch. Uh, I, sorry. You can look at other apps that you can kind of use. Mm-hmm. Uh, just watch is one of them as an example. Um, you can use to kind of find out where things are airing, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I guess you agree with me based on your response. Oh, yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's, it's annoying. Like Netflix is a juggernaut. Oh. Like I, I, not, not, not saying it's like, you know, really hurting them that much, but it's like, no, you know, that's why a thousand cuts, mm-hmm. but this is like maybe five cuts, you know? Yeah. Big five cuts though. To, to really me- mi- mix up the metaphor in a weird way. Yeah. That doesn't a good make one. much sense. I like it. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah. Of course. Right on. But, um, anyways, I, I guess to bring it back to Marvel, um, so Steven Soderbergh, uh, I mentioned that he has a new, uh, movie coming out called Kimmy, which is uh, I th- it was released on Crave TV, by the way, as well as HBO Max. It's a Crave here in Canada. Yeah, it's out. Uh, and you know, another director having a big movie coming out. Another comment on superhero movies, but this time, Simon, it's not the typical. These movies have no content. It's actually uh, a little bit different. <laughs> um, so, uh, so Steven Soderbergh uh, pretty much you know came out and started talking about how. These superhero movies don't have enough fucking, Simon. Fucking. And uh, I actually have a a little quote uh, that I'm taking off Variety.com where he says, and I I quote, I'm not a snob. It's not that I feel it's some lower tier in any way. It really becomes about what universe you occupy as a storyteller. I'm just too earthbound to really release myself to a universe in which Newtonian physics don't exist. I just have a lack of imagination in that regard, which is why the one foray I had into pure science fiction, 2002's Solaris, was essentially a character drama that happened to be set on a spaceship. Also, for a lot of these, for me to understand the world and how to write or supervise the writing of the characters and stories, apart from the fact that I can bend time and defy gravity and shoot beams out of my fingers, there's no fucking uh, nobody's fucking exclamation point. Like, I don't know how to tell people how to behave in a world in which that it is not a thing. The fantasy spectacle universe, as far as I can tell, typically doesn't involve a lot of fucking. And also things like who's paying these people? Who do they work for? And how does this job come to be? <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't know. I read that and I'm like, man, this guy's hilarious. It's uh, I think that's a pretty funny uh, way to look at, you know, these these superhero movies. But I, I feel like, although it's uh, it's funny, he's he's kind of wrong 
in a way. Um, you know, like if you're looking at it in like the vacuum of just like the MCU movies, yeah, you're, you're kind of right. There was, I guess, the one sex scene in Eternals. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, we have like the Suicide Squad movie that, uh, you know, James Gunn came out with. There was fucking in there, you know? Mm. Peacemaker. Yeah, there is. They got some fucking in there. Yeah. Well, those are both by the same guy, yeah, James Gunn. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> that's that's uh, it's fair, though. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's I think it's all I don't know if you have to show it. You know what I mean? Like there is in behind the scenes, even in the Marvel movies. I feel like it's implied potentially. But yeah, I can see what he's saying. It's a lot. It's a lot more toned down. If you consider the the Netflix TV series, mm-hmm. you know, those are there's some sex in that yeah for sure there is indeed i don't know i i can see what he's saying it is a funny statement and i do appreciate that he's not bashing the marvel movies he's just kind of giving his own little opinion on it and he doesn't seem to dislike them or Mm -hmm. you know again disparage the creators making marvel movies which is why we bring this up again after many episodes of bringing it up and that again scorsese bashed marvel movies we had uh, uh denis villeneuve bashed marvel movies we had who else oh we had ridley scott bashed marvel movies yeah. it's like i feel like the bashes that they made against the marvel movies marvel movies was kind of almost like uh, of them not understanding what mm-hmm. they are or what they have to offer and i think it's because they didn't watch some of them but yeah anyway and then you had roland emmerich coming in and saying these movies they're, they're there's no substance yeah, <laughs> that was the weirdest one. Yeah, and okay. I think you said that. You pointed that out last week. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we'll we like them it. all. We like all the types of movies, <laughs> and, except the except the bad ones. Yeah. Uh, like true. Rise of Skywalker. Anyway. Yeah, fuck that movie. Um, it sucks. That was a, Same with The Circle. Obligatory Rise of Skywalker reference. Yeah, screw that movie. How much we dislike Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. It's very disappointing considering how good... Oh, we'll get there, Simon. We'll get there. Actually, okay. I'll leave the I'll leave the listeners in suspense. <laughs> oh yeah, you're keeping them in. You're keeping the the uh, AirPods in their ears. Oh yeah, dude. Well done. Before we get there, Adrian. Before we get there, okay. Let's reach into that mailbag for a moment here, shall we? We ask our listeners to write into us with comments, questions, and corrections by way of Twitter or by email to spillfocuspodcast at gmail dot com. And Kenneth Stadelbauer wrote into us, and he said, "Hey, you guys. Hey, man." Definitely agreeing with Adrian about the significance of the Scream franchise, especially the first movie. Mm -hmm. Wes Craven reimagined the slasher genre with articulate villains who didn't possess preternatural abilities, were able to be harmed, and didn't have a melodramatic, distressing backstory. The films were meta in the sense that they referenced other slasher flicks and even parodied themselves with the stab movies within the movies. Mm -hmm. On another note, still ridiculously excited over the news about a raised eyebrows movie. I hope it is presented as an upbeat tale of Steve Stolier's struggle to get animal crackers shown in a theater to his being a regular fixture in Groucho's home. And all the misadventures he had, from wondering if Groucho even liked him, to becoming friends with prominent people at the time, like Dick Cavett. You can't tell the story without casting an actor to play Aaron Fleming, Groucho's manager, Mm -hmm. but from Stolier's account and others, she treated Groucho with what today would be considered elder abuse. Uh, Sienna Miller, by the way, is apparently cast as Aaron Fleming in the new Groucho Marx movie, the Rise Eyebrows movie, by the way. Mm. I'd rather that they kept things focused, though, on Stolier and kept Fleming as a background character, like his cook and nurses. This, of course, signed Kenneth this email, and he's got a quote here, like usual. Life is a whim of several billion cells to be you for a while. A quote by Julius Henry Groucho Marx. Ah, the socialist. Nope. Not related. No relation to the socialist, Carl. Anyway, we talked about both of these things on last episode. That's why Ken is talking about these things specifically. The Mm -hmm. first being, of course, you did a -a screamathon last week and he wanted to weigh in on that. And then the second being the Groucho Marx story, which is quite interesting. And uh, I talked to Ken at the store because we worked together and he was talking to me about how he actually owns the raised eyebrows. Like he he owns like one of the original copies or whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, one of the original print copies, like not, not he didn't like stand in line at a bookstore. I, I don't think, but um, or like break into the factory while they were printing it. But but they I but yeah, he's did, very yeah. excited because he loves this story so much, and uh, he has quoted funny enough Groucho Marx many times mm-hmm. uh, when he's written into Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. So I appreciate the fact that the. He was like kind of ecstatic that we brought this up last episode. He didn't realize that they were making a raised eyebrows adaptation. 
So he was pretty happy about that, which is pretty cool. I'm happy. He's happy. I don't have that much familiarity with Groucho Marx's work as much as I know that he's a he's kind of a legend. But yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I mean, either other than you know socialism and all that stuff. No, no socialism. Socialism not related to this. Oh, okay. Not related to this. Fair enough. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad uh, Ken agrees with me about the Scream franchise. Cause God damn, I love those movies. I'm, I'm still thinking about them. I kind of want to rewatch them all again. I just, I just watched them. They're just so fun. They're these, again, super meta, like horror slasher movie. That's like, it's pretty much like a whodunit um, in every one as well, because you never know who the murderer is. And it's like, oh, anyone can be the murderer. And they really play that up in every single one, which is, it's so fun. These movies are really fun. I, I really like horror, man. I'm getting into it again. Yeah. Went through that brief phase last year. For like a couple months there, and I think I'm back in it, baby. I think I'm back in it. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Speaking of horror, Adrian, a uh, movie franchise that seems to be going away from horror a little bit is Jurassic World. Ooh. Yeah, you're right. And I bring this up because the Jurassic World Dominion trailer just launched, and it's a doozy, man. I wasn't that excited about this whole mm-hmm. this whole uh, you know end of the trilogy kind of situation. Uh, I wasn't as excited as I am now. Like that trailer was something. I think the best trailer of 2022. So far? Maybe. Yeah? Maybe, yeah. I think so, maybe, as well. It's pretty awesome. Like, the the only thing I, again, left to be desired was uh, the stuff they, I guess, left on the table or put on the table. Like, I just don't, or took it t- took off the table. Now I'm getting, mixing a metaphor really badly. <laughs> I am badly, so confused. Dude. Anyways, <laughs> is the fact that they, they showed, in the last shot of that trailer, they showed Chris Pratt um, and the cast of the old movies mm-hmm. together in a shot. It's like, you don't need that. We already know they're going to be in the same shot. We don't need to see that here. That would have been like, you know, um, we talked about this with the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Like you showed all the villains in that second trailer. Mm-hmm. And I really don't think that was necessary. I, I think that was like kind of overkill. We already knew by seeing the the bomb kind of roll from um, Green Goblin and uh, seeing the claws and seeing Alfred Molina, we didn't need to know that you know, Sandman was in it as an example, mm-hmm. as well as Electro. We, we're we're good. We're, we're okay with not seeing that. And I think that that's the same here. I know you love Jurassic World. So what did you think overall of this trailer? And am I right, or do you think that they they are building enough hype here, or it's it's worth it to build this kind of hype by showing off Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, and Sam Neill, as well as Chris Pratt and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard in mm-hmm. one shot? I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I, like, I, I kind of disagree with you on that. I think it was worth it to show it in Ooh. the trailer because, I don't okay. know, it, like watching that and seeing that scene in particular in that trailer brought so many nostalgic memories um, rushing through my brain. And I just got so freaking hype but don't you want to see that in the movie i I definitely do you get excited for things and you tell me sometimes i don't want to watch any more of this Mm -hmm. i don't want to see any more trailers i don't want to see anything about it because i just want to see the thing yeah you know what i mean like you lost the magic you're not going to see that magic in a theater or i don't know am i calling out your hypocrisy or do you have certain rules that i'm not aware of here like why is this an exception i don't know i can i can change my mind whenever i want to on specific things i just (laughs) i just sure can i just feel um i don't know i just really liked that and you know as someone that you know isn't deep in the industry uh like ourselves you know you, you you put that in the trailer and now these these people watching it are like, oh man, this is so cool. These worlds are colliding, and it's just going to sell more tickets. Um, as mm. you know, like for me, I, I know it was going to happen regardless. And yeah, it would have been nice to see that in the movie but itself. You're sold. But is my point. You're sold. I know. I'm. I'm. But you don't need sold. to be sold any further. You're like you're like arguing for the corporation in this case. It seems like, but I'm not. Maybe I'm mistaken. Well, yeah. Like, you're like yes, it's going to sell more tickets. Like yes, it will. But it will already sell more tickets. The like Jurassic World and its what was the sequel? I'm going to buy 800 tickets for myself, Simon. That's why it's going to sell so many tickets. What was the second mo- second movie called? Jurassic Kingdom? World: Fallen, Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. Yes, that one and uh, Jurassic World did very well. Yeah, from my understanding, I don't think you need to do do the. Anyway, well, yeah. Yeah, you disagree, so I'm not going to... I don't know. I, th- I think you can just... You, let's agree to disagree. Yeah, I don't know. I think you can just build that that extra bit of hype, and I, I'm very excited for this. I can't freaking wait. I think this trailer was awesome. It's, uh, yeah, I, again, this is easily my most anticipated movie of the year, like, by I would say by a mile. I, I'm really excited for Batman, too, I guess, but uh, I don't know. This movie, it's just, it's pulling on all those heartstrings man it's 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 scratching that itch in my brain i just love dinosaurs killing people 
You know, I just love these this cast of characters being brought together. And yeah, I couldn't be more stoked for this. It looks awesome. It looks so fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, it looked again way better than I thought it would. Like, at least the trailer itself was fantastic. And then you had like the the voiceover from David Attenborough in the beginning. Yeah, and I I just really appreciate that. Yeah, it was super cool. Yeah, this movie's coming out June tenth. Mm-hmm. Just to be clear, God, it's gonna be so fucking. Sad. Yeah, I probably won't watch any more trailers. Like, I didn't watch. Uh, they released the what was it? The like the first five minutes of the movie. Like a while back, if I recall correctly, or the first ten minutes, I don't remember. Yeah, and you said you wouldn't watch it. That's why I asked those questions. Yeah, See, that's yeah. like you changed your mind just now. Well, that's that's different. why I'm confused. That, that's that's like showing Is the it? start of the movie as opposed to just like in you know, these little scenes. That's better, in my opinion. I don't know. Uh-uh. You're not spoiling anything because you know nothing's going to happen shocking in the first five minutes of the movie, and nothing did, by the way. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I never watched it. So I want to know. Yeah, like this is worse for me because I do they have any other surprises is my question. Do they have any other surprises like that? We asked that question with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings because they showed Wong in the trailer. And yeah. we're like, why are they showing that? I know that they probably have other surprises, but is there anything? Like that's a pretty cool surprise. Why not save that? Do mm-hmm. we need that? That movie's different though because the hype for that movie is not nearly as high as a Spider-Man No Way Home or Jurassic World Dominion. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I digress. I'm beating a dead horse i apologize you're beating off a dead horse yeah no 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 bestiality no (laughs) bad bad adrian it is bad yeah would you fuck a dinosaur oh what's that what did you say nothing let's continue let's just continue don't worry about it jesus christ all right um adrian what else did you watch this week man Ooh, simon what else did you watch well uh i know we watched a couple of the same things because i see it in the notes so i'll talk about the one thing that you haven't watched um real quick oh okay that's weird Uh, sure you want you want to go into the things we watched together i mean we didn't watch it together i mean we technically watched one of these together but obviously we didn't talk Whatever you want, whatever strikes your fancy, Ooh. whatever floats your boat, man. Do what makes you happy. I'll just talk about it. It's a movie called The Night House, which is uh, uh, another like horror movie that, funnily enough, yeah. was on Disney Plus through Star. Um, yeah, they're killing it. And yeah, man, again, there's so much content on there. It's kind of giving me a little bit of anxiety because I was like looking at it like, damn, now, now I just have more shit to watch. I still haven't watched the end of o- or like the rest of Ozark, which I need to jump back to. I have Succession, I have Westworld, and now there's so much goddamn stuff. It's frustrating as hell. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, I uh, you know I was in a little bit of a horror mood. I was hanging out with a friend of mine, and we decided to watch um, the Night House, which is a really good horror movie simon yeah it's about knights um of the round table and they're in this house and they room together and um what happens is basically uh they suddenly there's a creak in the night and they draw their swords Mm -hmm. they're like oh my god and uh and then there's uh are you gonna keep me going here yeah roll me back in adrian this Uh, is obviously bullshit simon you know I, i don't do that well you need to sometimes okay um, Got to. But yeah, anyways, so this movie, The Night House, it's about this uh, woman uh, played by Rebecca Hall uh, who is widowed, like recently widowed. Her her husband kills uh, kills himself and the movie starts off after oh, boy. like the husband's already dead. And, right. you know, the husband leaves like a little note for her, uh, like a suicide note that doesn't really mean much at the time. It, it essentially just says, you know, like uh, there there is nothing Um and like now you're gonna be safe, blah 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 blah. It's like a small. And note. it's N I G H T, not K N I G H T. Correct, Simon. You're so right. You're not really specifying. I'm doing all the specifying on my own jokes. Not the greatest experience, but sometimes Adrian doesn't doesn't, doesn't catch me when I do a trust fall. So it's true. I'll let you fall. It is what it is. Sorry to interrupt. Continue. Um, but uh, yeah, so the movie kind of like begins like that, and and shortly after her husband dies, in her house. Oh, no. Some creepy shit starts going down. Oh. And it's... Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying that her second, another husband died as well. No, her her one and only husband. Okay, cool. Passed away. All right. And after her one and only husband kills himself, just the one husband that she ever had hmm. up until this point. Yes. And he kills him, himself. Yeah. She like weird shit starts happening in, in her house, house, like some, you know, supernatural store sort of stuff, you know, 
her radio starts turning on and all that. And honestly, the the movie starts setting up a bunch of mysteries very early on. And it does a really great job revealing those mysteries. So, uh, you know, uh, essentially about like, oh, like maybe her husband wasn't the man that she thought he was. And maybe he was doing other stuff, you know, behind her back. And she just never knew it. And she starts uh, or begins to unravel these mysteries as the movie progresses. And um, it's very well done in terms of like keeping the suspense going all throughout the, you know, hour and 45 minute film. The use of, uh, you know, this, well, the use of the score is just, oh man, it's so damn good. And the way it plays with, you know, volume in the score itself to kind of, I wouldn't re- necessarily call it jump scares, honestly, because the scares that happen, you almost see it coming a lot of the time. Um, like it sets it up and you're looking at this almost, uh, I want to say like an optical illusion type thing that all of a sudden, you know, moves in a specific way that just, you know, frightens the shit out of you. And I was sitting here like literally just, you know, hair standing up on my back, like a, like a frightened kitten, you know what I mean, man, (laughs) all throughout this movie. And, um, it's all in all, just like a very well done movie. It's, it's kind of difficult to talk about because the, movie itself relies so heavily on this mystery that's slowly being unraveled and you're mostly just following Rebecca Hall through the movie um one of her friends is uh played by Sarah Goldberg who is um I only know her from uh, Barry um the 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 uh David Hader uh, sorry uh, Bill Hader um HBO series uh, I don't think I've seen her in anything else but she plays you know Rebecca Hall's uh, friend in the movie uh, and is like just like a very supportive a friend of hers, but doesn't play a huge part in in the film as a whole. Um, And, uh, you know, just kind of tries to be like, listen, like you shouldn't be looking into this stuff because you never know what your husband may have gone to and you don't want to ruin that memory, et cetera, so on and so forth. But all in all, I think the movie itself is uh, fantastic. The payoff at the end is very well done. It's a very, like, I really loved the ending of the film. And again, the directions the film takes and, you know, the way it kind of reveals the mystery to you slowly and gives you enough information that you can kind of predict where the movie is going to go, but still ends up surprising you in some very unique ways. And it's something I would actually highly recommend uh, any fan of like horror to watch because I think it balances that almost um, art house style of horror while keeping that, you know, like, well, you know, like 90s sort of like jump scare style of horror as well going. Um, and uh, yeah, I really like this. I think it's I think it's a fantastic movie. I think critics agree as well. I think it's like over 80 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, 87 percent. Oh, damn. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really fun time. Uh, it's a really fun time and I highly recommend it. It's uh, directed by David Bruckner. Uh, I don't think I've watched any of his other movies. I'll be honest with you, um, at least not off the top of my head. Um, and then the music, which again, I really liked, uh, is by Ben Lovett. Um, and, uh, again, just brilliantly done all in all. Um, and something, yeah, I got it. You look at you bringing up the music. You're like Simon. Yeah. You're like me. I learned from the best. I'm Simon. Yeah. Me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's nice of you. Huh. Yeah. Oh, shucks, man. Well, that's great. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you liked it. That's, that's fantastic. I really did. I really did. Like a frightened kitten. A frightened kitten. Hmm. It is very eerie and scary. I was just like, Jesus Christ. What else did you watch this week? Oh, Simon, Simon, Simon. So last week, yes, you did a brilliant review of Book of Boba Fett. I just want to say a that. brilliant review. It was an absolutely okay. brilliant okay. review of Book of Boba Fett. Wow, I don't know about that. And you know what? After that review that you gave me, I was like, you know what? Yeah. It's going to be impossible to forget about this now. Hmm. And guess what? I didn't oh. forget about it. So I decided to binge watch oh. the rest of the six episodes that I have yet to watch of Book of Boba Fett. Whoa. You watched all seven, right to the end. All seven episodes, right to the end, the season finale. Um, and all in all, this show's really damn good. God damn it. This show's fantastic. And uh, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, um, they just know what they're doing with these TV series. And again, the more I watch this high quality Star Wars content with, you know, the Mandalorian seasons one and two and now Book of Boba Fett, the more and more disappointed I get about the quality of Rise of Skywalker. And it just, it's, I, it, I, I wouldn't even say that it brings this this quality like this content down actually. I would almost argue that 
the contrast between these two pro like it's the same property with star wars but the contrast between the quality of like book of boba fett and Ma the mandalorian versus uh, rise of skywalker it makes me hate rise of skywalker even more i just keep on mm. thinking about that movie and being like you guys fucked this up so royally and made like this shitty fucking movie when you know you have john favreau and dave filoni creating some of the best if not the best star wars content that we've ever gotten and i just want to say in particular episode five six and seven those last three episodes of book of boba fett are some of the best fucking shit i've ever watched god it's so hype there's so much star sorry my uh little clock's going off in the background I don't know, but there's so mm. much, uh, so much. You can, can you hear it? You didn't turn it off or it's, it's going to stop. Oh, oh, it's like a cuckoo clock. It's a cuckoo clock. It's like a, fancy... oh, whatever, not a cuckoo clock. That wouldn't be a cuckoo clock. What am I five? No, it's a, like a uh, grandfather clock. It's a grandfather clock. I got it from my parents. It's nice. It's oh. a nice clock, but that's good. It's going to go off in one hour. Got a fireplace and a grandfather clock. You're like living in. La Vida Loca. 1955 here. Yeah. But uh, again, yeah, those last uh, three episodes in particular, uh, I would say like episodes. La Vida Loca. <laughs> what the hell? Sorry. Yeah. yeah well, last episodes, I agree with you. Yeah. Those last episodes are pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. They, they really go mm -hmm. all in. Yeah. I think it honestly gets better and better as it goes. It's an interesting show. I like the calmness of it though. I, I said this before and I feel like I, I like the character development while being something that's very, light to watch i don't know if you did if, if you found that watching it all at once or, or kind of in, in a in a short period of time was almost a better experience as i kind of suggested last week but mm -hmm. the week to week thing was a again i think that it's worse but yeah because i think i watched like two episodes a night give or take that's what about. i did yeah yeah it's basically what i did until of course the final episode in mm -hmm. which case i just watched that on its own but yeah and uh yeah i just i just really enjoyed it and i do agree with you I, like it's it's weird. In, I feel like in some shows, I'm almost okay with waiting every week. Like Peacemaker, I'm not like – I actually kind of like that it's coming out week to week because I'm just like, okay, cool. Then, now there's something I can look forward to and it's not like yeah. I need to consume this all at once. But I feel like Book of Boba Fett is just so – yeah, I don't know. Like I, I, it almost comes off as, as a negative, but it is just so slow. Not much happens in every episode um, until okay. those last three episodes, which is more than okay. But having the benefit of being able to watch it all at once and being like, oh, like this was a nice buildup. Now I can just watch this next episode. It's almost, yeah. it's, it's, I think you even mentioned this. It's almost like popcorn y, like popcorn flicky without being. It's that. just so fun to watch. Yeah. Is, is it my thing? I don't know about calling it a popcorn, popcorn flick, flick because we, I don't know. That's not, maybe that's not a negative connotation. I said it last week that it, maybe that's a negative connotation. Maybe that's not. It's just, it's just, you can just consume it so, like, it's like, uh, I don't know, something you just really look forward to. It's like a bag of M&Ms you just rip mm -hmm. open. And just Each M&M is better than the last. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, like I don't a, know. It's just like a Hershey's Cookies and Cream chocolate bar. The detail in it is so good. The music is so good. The production value, the acting. It's just overall, it's just, mm -hmm. again, very, very fantastic. The only thing I think, again, just to talk about that thing about the week to week and how I don't love it is the fact that when I watched the final episode, I waited like a five-day, six-day period before I got to watch it. From from because again I watched two episodes kind of a day until like Thursday or, or Friday or whatever and then I, it was only again there was a break and because of all this hype and now I'm like all hyped up for that show at that point then the finale kind of felt lackluster to me mm. in a weird way and I'm like the only reason this feels like this is because I watched them all at once and then suddenly watched the last one in a gap and I yeah. think that that's the reason and when I think back on it I'm like no there's nothing wrong with that episode the finale is fantastic and you watched it pretty much right away as soon as mm -hmm. it came out after watching all the other episodes prior so i i think you have a better perspective because you just said five six seven mm -hmm. are are all each fantastic i just think that if you watched you, you can almost be disappointed because you've been waiting for this finale and you 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 always have hype there's always mm -hmm. a, a tremendous amount of hype when you're waiting for the final episode of a series and that's kind of what i felt like i was like well how are they going to wrap this up and they mm -hmm. did it really wonderfully. They did it really well. But at the same time, you always expect more sometimes. I don't know. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like the finale, by the way. It's good. Yeah, I quite liked it as well. I think out of the last three episodes, it's probably my least favorite. Like, I, I think... Uh, I, oh, I think, you do think that. So maybe, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I still really liked it. Don't get me wrong. It's like comparing and just like really good shit. Um, 
but I don't know. I think episode five was just like such a nice surprise. And then like episode six, especially I was like, damn, I can't believe this is like where they're going with this. It's, it's so wild. And then again, I really liked episode seven. I just thought the, um, it's like a, like, you know, like a, there's some like action scenes in, in it. And, uh, I thought the action scenes, some were really great. And then some were just kind of like, eh, you know, a little bit just like, oh, they're running away. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. A, a little bit plot conveniency. Yeah. I don't know about plot convenience, but it's like uh, the ending of WandaVision, you know, there's mm-hmm. that battle. It's yeah. like, ah, the battle is not the interesting part about the whole thing. Although people were kind of complaining because like Boba wasn't using his abilities enough and stuff. Like, it's so silly, yeah. but. Anyway, like throughout, because again, it's pretty slow. It's not a super fast show and they take their time and they're confident enough to take their time. J.J. Mm-hmm. Abrams was not confident, I would argue, going into Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. He saw the undertaking, te- undertaking of taking on the last movie of this Skywalker trilogy and he just, I think, buckled under pressure, honestly. He tried to please everyone at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, I don't hate J.J. Abrams' filmmaking typically, but this particular one was not good mm-hmm. like notably yeah because again he's trying to please everyone and i don't think john favreau and dave filoni as much as they do do things that are fan servicey they're not doing them so much so that they're ever negating anything that happened before it mm-hmm. so and that's really important yeah i think i know i agree completely they're not doing anything that breaks their, their own rules too like you can't break yeah kind of the the fabric of that reality too you got to be careful with that and so anyway yeah so we're, we're going to talk about this more in the coming week or, or so we'll, we'll launch in a closer look episode which is a spoiler cast type episode of split focus of film and tv podcast and we'll go into some detail some spoilery detail of what happened in the seven episodes of uh, mm-hmm. the book of boba fett because i think that uh, it's hard to talk about it in I don't know. I've got a lot of notes I kind of kind of wrote throughout the watching of the of the series and I, I've got a lot to say and I think it's again, we don't spoil anything on the regular episodes of mm-hmm. our podcast. So the only way to do this would be to release a kind of a bonus episode, which we will do mm-hmm. in the coming week or so. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And we watched one more thing, Adrian. Do you want to tell the audience what that was? We watched oh, it together in the theater. So- well not talking, of course. We're not some kind of fools. Yeah, we don't talk outside this podcast. Never have, never will, man. Never have, never will. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to make it fresh for the audience. That's yeah. what we're doing. Adrian, what did we watch? Oh, Simon, tell the audience what they won. We so dumb watched. Yeah, what? West Side Romeo and Juliet story. That's what we watched. Yes, it's incredibly well known that West Side Story is. Romeo and Juliet. Was that meant to be a revelation? I didn't know that, actually. I like went into it and I, I, I actually didn't know that. And I was like watching the movie. And I'm like, wait one second. Like this is <laughs> like after like the like 20, 30 minutes in, I was like, this is just Romeo and Juliet, isn't it? And then the movie like finished and uh I leaned over to uh uh the, the other person I was with, not you, uh, because again, we don't talk outside this podcast. I'm like, this is Romeo and Juliet. Am I right? And then she's like, Yeah, and this, you were right. <laughs> Like that, it's it's well known that this movie is that. I was like, I had no freaking clue, but uh, I guess it was it was a nice surprise <laughs> going in. Uh, but Simon, uh, that's why I didn't want to watch it actually. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, that's I. I you were the one to suggest to go watch it a couple mm-hmm. times, and I kind of was never that enthusiastic. Yeah. But I, I seeing a Steven Spielberg movie, going into like see what he's put together for this and stuff, and I've never actually seen West Side Story like in you know in a in a like a theater theater. And a, and a play uh, like as a musical play or the original so it, movie. it was i knew i wanted to see it deep down but it's just like i feel like there was other movies that are more at top of mind i guess for me yeah but uh but yeah it uh what did you think then so you you thought it was a knockoff of romeo and juliet and mm. uh what else i thought uh like in in general i like i like this movie i thought it's uh kind of fun um like some good music uh some amazing absolutely amazing choreography and cinematography. Uh, I think the cinematography is easily the highlight of this movie uh, along again, obviously along with the choreography, but the use of, you know, just like specific camera angles and all that sort of stuff, lighting it's uh, it's, it's very well done. And, and Steven Spielberg really did an outstanding job with it. Uh, but it being a Romeo and Juliet knockoff, I think the story is a little bit lackluster. There's a, you know, a couple things in particular where I'm just like, ah, like, like why are characters acting like this? And I had to kind of get over that in a weird way. 
Um, because you mean again, like singing randomly after a fight or well, I can get over that like sort of walking stuff. down the street and no one's confused whether just singing and dancing down the street. Is that <laughs> what you mean? Or I, I can get over that sort of stuff like with musicals, because when musicals happen, it's just like uh, in, in my brain, it's like, okay, in this universe, mus- musicals are just a thing. Like people just act this way and I can get past that, but I can't get past that, uh, you know, like specific characters making just these almost rash decisions or, or just like outlandish choices. Uh, there's one choice in particular where I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, why would, you know, she act this way? And it really took me out of the movie. And I, and again, I understand this is like a retelling of like a Shakespeare play, but I feel like you could have modernized it and made it a little bit more like. It's not, well, not, it's not really a retelling of a Shakespeare. I'm confused. It's not well, exactly like Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, I there know. are differences. It's just very similar. It was, yeah, exactly. it was like they used a lot of the pieces of what Romeo and Juliet is when they. Yeah, it's like Lion King with Hamlet sort of thing, but Lion King's better. That would be a good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say that's true. What you just said about it being better, but yeah, like the. How dare you? Uh, how dare you? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Come on. Um, but yeah, again, I just, I just feel like they could have modernized this a little bit more and made uh, the characters not so. But it takes place in the nineteen. 19- 50s i'm confused what do you mean modernized it well like not made characters just fucking i don't know like do dumb shit it's hard it's hard to talk about this um, like i don't know if that's modern i know what you're talking about but i don't don't know that that's really modernizing it yeah that's it's tough because i know you don't want to spoil it i mean this is not exactly a a mystery story but yeah it's not like a there's not (laughs) there's no like twist yeah (laughs) you gotta know what's coming but i know what you're talking about and i kind of don't agree with you to be honest i i I kind of it's i don't know there's like a quite a few outlandish things that happen in it if you want to go there and i don't think that this is that crazy but we're talking so vaguely that nobody knows what we're talking about so let's just move on from that (laughs) i know what you're talking about though there are story beats that feel kind of awkward and weird and don't make sense Mm -hmm. in a in some way but i i argue you don't know who these characters are really because you haven't spent enough time with the development Mm -hmm. to at the at the probably the i think the two-thirds mark is the the point in which you think is a is a problematic Mm -hmm. point of the plot i really don't think that you know those characters enough to make a judgment i don't think you do but Maybe you do. You th- you feel like you do clearly because you think what they're doing is a is an odd decision. But is it an odd decision for them? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. They're clinically insane. Is it based on the way I was just talking so vaguely, or what? <laughs> yeah. The, with no, no, like that. Those characters are clinically insane. No, no, they're not. I really don't <laughs> think so. I also think there's like a lot of compassion with that decision that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Let's just let's just move on from there. I, I, my my thing with this this movie, like you just said. Very, very well choreographed. It looks like some of these shots are so well choreographed. Some of the, they're like throwing objects in the air, catching them in time. And like, there's so much detail in the set pieces that Mm -hmm. they've built. This is Spielberg at his finest again. And there's no, I guess, no wonder that he was nominated for uh, best director. Mm -hmm. uh, Because we're about to talk about that in a moment. But um, the the, the nominations for the Oscars were just announced. And it was, again, it's no mystery why. He clearly, every movie he makes, he just goes the full nine yards in every capacity. The lighting design is very Spielberg-esque in a lot of ways. It's like, there's like an old Hollywood nature about it that's just so brilliant. I really, really love it. The costuming, the – oh, man. It's just – I think overall, um, again, it's completely realized in, in like every way. I, I, again, even the acting, like Ansel Elgort, of course. Um, we got, again, another Oscar-nominated uh, actress in uh, uh, Ariana DeBose, who's mm-hmm. just – does an amazing job. She's nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Mm-hmm. And you got Rachel Zegler, of course, who's been like cast as Snow White. And I can see why, yeah. clearly from this. Her voice is absolutely like immaculate. It's so awesome. Mm-hmm. And she's so good. I, there, there's a lot to love. I feel like the, the way it's put together is absolutely brilliant. It's, it's, a, like, it's a clinically impressive movie. It's, mm-hmm. it, it, like Spielberg puts on a clinic to make this. It, he does such a great job. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the story's a little weird. I feel like I missed a bunch of it because I didn't, uh, I, di- I didn't use Duolingo enough trying to learn Spanish. That is a weird thing. <laughs> a lot of this movie is in Spanish. <laughs> I did find that weird that there's a lot of it in Spanish. I didn't know that part. I don't know if yeah. that's part of the stage play as well from like uh, Jerome Robbins. 
But I, I, I wondered about that. Like, were they were they missing subtitles? Yeah, I was curious because like there are like full on conversations that happen in Spanish, and I was like sitting there, and I'm like, I you can I think the way the actors emote in those scenes, you can kind of get what they're talking about, and I think that's a you know like a big you know big uh, like like thing to point out with these actors, them doing such an amazing job with that. But I yeah, like there's full on conversations where I was sitting there. I was like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? Yeah. I think you get all the context. I think mm-hmm. they give it to you. So I th- I do think that the subtitles aren't missing. Yeah. It's not that it's necessary, but I feel like it would have been nice to know exactly what they were saying. <laughs> at yeah. Times. It would have been cool. Yeah. Just throw that in there. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm always curious about people that are like, you know, uh, like I'm bilingual, but there's not many movies that speak like Hungarian and English, but like, I'm always curious about those like movies or like people that, you know, maybe someone does speak like Spanish and English and like, do they get more out of West Side Story than I do? It's possible. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good call. Another thing to point out for sure. You didn't see the previews because you came fashionably late. Meaning like you came 20 minutes <laughs> after you were supposed to be there mm-hmm. in the movie theater. You're right. Yeah. It is what it is. But the previews, Adrian, showed off turning red. Oh, the animated film from Pixar, which is not coming to theaters. And I found that quite jarring. I looked around. I don't know oh, why I looked yeah. around. There was no one in the theater. And I was like, why is this being shown off as a, as a film preview? Why are they showing off this trailer for Turning Red when they're literally not going to play this movie in theaters? It seems like such a waste. They put something else in there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was very confused. It might have been because this decision to put it exclusively on Disney Plus came after um, – West Side Story had come out. Mm -hmm. So they just, I guess they have a set like trailer list that they just run through. I did find that a little strange. I didn't understand. Did the trailer say that it's still coming to theaters? Or did it? Uh, Well, it's assumed it's coming to theaters if it's in the, in the previews. Yeah. No, I'm aware, but it just stated the date. I just said the date. Okay. Yeah. Well, they don't say they're coming to theaters for any of them. They just kind of, except they used to do that actually uh, a little while ago. What was it in 2020? Yeah. Uh, when we watched Tenet, it was very clear like Tenet. some of these movies were Tenet. coming to theaters because it specifically said coming exclusively to theaters at the end of these trailers, which is funny because some of those movies didn't even do that. Like I think Judas and the Black Messiah, wasn't it? Wasn't that one of them? I think I can't remember, man. Didn't come exclusively to theaters. But one thing I do know is all the all the Sony movies say coming exclusively to theaters. Uh did did they? I don't know. Like those big Sony trailers. Like Venom did and Morbius. Okay. And uh Spider Man yeah. No Way Home as well. Yeah, all right. My point was about turning red is that it seems almost like a slight against theaters because this movie was yanked from the theatrical release schedule. So I think that that's the alarming part. They're advertising it in a theater coming up soon, but it's not actually coming to the theaters in the end anyway. Unless somehow in Canada it's coming to theaters, but I don't think that's happening. Anyways, West Side Story, very good. Yeah. It's just it's a it's a movie for film fans, mm-hmm. if that's a way to describe it. And then again, the lighting, the sound, the music, the the choreography. There's like no it's like no hair is out of place. Mm-hmm. And Ariana DeBose, I feel like is the highlight overall like i feel like in terms of acting ability and her singing and the dancing it's like wow like where did she come from i don't think she's in where did she go where did she come from cotton eye joe i don't really see how that's relevant fint to what we're talking about but okay yeah she she was great is all i'm saying cool adrian should we move on to the news then <sighs> nah okay cool let's begin with a small collection of more focused stories that have been particularly pertinent this week number one On February 8th, 2022, the 94th Academy Award nominees were announced with actors Tracy Ellis Ross and Leslie Jordan presenting. Director Jane Campion's Western film The Power of the Dog led the nominations with 12, while director Denis Villeneuve's epic adaptation, Dune, garnered the second most nominations with 10. Both director Steven Spielberg's West Side Story and director Kenneth Branagh's Belfast picked up seven nominations apiece. The 10 nominees for Best Picture were as follows. Nightmare Alley, Coda, The Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Dune, Dune, Belfast, Drive My Car, Licorice Pizza, Don't Look Up, and King Richard. Adrian, what did you make of the Oscar nominations for this year? I don't know. What, uh, what did you think? Uh, I think, uh, again, I haven't watched all these movies, but I think this is a fairly fair list for the Best Picture nominations. I think uh, one of the big snubs, I would argue, is uh, Denny Villeneuve not being 
um, nominated for Best Director, which is very shocking to me, considering do- how amazing Dune is and that it, you know, has like nine f- other nominations on top of being Best Picture. It, it, that, uh, to me, was fairly shocking. Um, and then also, of course, the the biggest snub of them all, not having Spider-Man No Way Home be uh, a Best Picture nomination. It's unbelievable. Um, although honestly, like I, I'm not, I'm not, I could see it, but at the same time, don't see you believe it. No, I don't. So it isn't unbelievable. You literally believe it. I believe that it's unbelievable. believable. Okay. Well that's, that's almost everything in your world mm-hmm. yeah. right now It is that you're looking at. So that's not news. It is. It's true. Um, but anyways, yeah, no, that, that, that is the thing that I think is the, the biggest snub, I think, because it's not about, they got to start stopping these snobs with this. I mm-hmm. feel like this is a, problem this movie alone single-handedly in some capacity that's that's too much maybe to say i was going to say single-handedly save theaters but it did such a great job at like pulling people to the theater in the time when omicron like the covid variant was Mm -hmm. really blasting through countries so i i think that it's just gotta they gotta change the rules about what it is that makes a movie considered great i guess It's rated very highly by critics. It's rated Mm -hmm. very highly by fans. Mm -hmm. It's really well built. There's some great acting in it. There's some great music by Michael Giacchino. There's, I mean, some great directing in some capacity. There's a lot of moving parts, great CG. The only thing it got nominated for was video, uh, whatever, visual effects. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. It is stupid. I agree with you. It's like... What are the rules? I don't understand. And it, we, I, we know this was going to happen. Like, just be honest. Mm-hmm. We knew this was going to happen, right? Well, honestly, like, I wasn't, I wasn't fully sure because Black Panther got nominated for Best Picture, and Black Panther, although it's a good movie, it's like, it's not that good. <laughs> it's it's Iron it's Man. Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. And it's just confusing. Like, it's not like Black Panther wasn't any unique movie, and I understand that it was like a predominantly black cast, and that definitely gave it like bonus points. Um, in terms of, I don't know if that's like bad to say, but it's, I, I think it was very clear um, that was the case when when that happened. I might I might be wrong in, in saying that, but the idea that yeah, Spider Man No Way Home didn't, and that movie did, is just confusing to me. It just doesn't it doesn't compute, and that's the only reason why I was like, yeah, there's a chance. It makes sense. Like, what? Why not? And like you said, it did like not necessarily single-handedly bring back the movie industry, but it really, it gave it a huge boon. You know what I mean? Like everyone- For the exhibition industry, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like streaming's going strong. Like they're they're going to be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, the, the theater um, industry, I guess I should say. The cine- cinema industry. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a little bit foolish. Um, and yeah, like it, what are these rules? What what are the guidelines? Like it just, it's kind of annoying. It's a, it's a little bit annoying. We kind of know what they are. It has to be- Borderline, if not completely, uh, an art house film. Yeah, but again, Black Panther. <laughs> I don't know. Wasn't. Like, <laughs> like Dune is clearly a blockbuster, right? It was nominated. Yeah. It's the most blockbustery one in this list, mm-hmm. I would say. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel completely jumped to the fence. I thought he was joking, but it, he was serious. <laughs> I think a lot for a lot of his uh, monologue, one of the nights of last week, and that he specifically just defended. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home and was questioning why on earth it was not nominated considering how well it did at the box office Mm -hmm. but also considering that Don't Look Up was nominated and it's a 57% on Rotten Tomatoes while Spider-Man No Way Home is in the 90s if I recall correctly or very close to 90%. Isn't it like 98? Spider-Man No Way Home? People love it is the the point. It's it's high and it's rated very well and I don't know what it is that you're, you know what I mean? Like what are you looking for? I, I don't know. There's a lot of snobbery. It's it's going on, and if you really want to recover the like the Academy Awards ratings, that's one way to do it. Is pull in not just people who only love specifically, again, putting on a clinic in a film. West Side Story deserves to be nominated at, to, for Best Picture, but mm-hmm. then on the other side, there are blockbusters that deserve continuously year on year to be nominated for mm-hmm. Best Picture, like Avengers Endgame. Yes, as an example. Yeah. So this can't be. Can't be popular, you know. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not acceptable. They're a bunch of hipsters. This is what this is. It is, and yeah, they are a bunch of hipsters. And uh, again, yeah, I just want to like highlight what you said. Yeah, like honestly, the way like the Oscars have been going down and down in viewership year over year. And it's not that the Oscars needs to be like the Academy Awards needs to be like this, 
you know, um, hugely popular event. But that's what Seth Rogen the, was saying. Yeah, but <laughs> did you see that at oh, all? Oh, Seth no, Rogen I didn't. was claiming that the Oscars are stupid. Like, what are we doing here? Why do they care that much that we, how we pat ourselves on the back? Like, why do they care that people watch this? Does this matter at all? Is it, it's kind of dumb. Yeah. You're just like patting yourselves on the back and say, look at us. Look at us on TV. Make sure you watch. <laughs> like, it's really, really aggressive. And like, what other industry does that? You don't see like scientists really do that. So it doesn't happen there. You don't see like, a sales, like a sales uh, competition, like worldwide or anything like that. You don't see the, the them trying to televise that, but yeah. for some reason, well, Hollywood is obviously very televised in general, so it kind of makes sense there, I guess. But most industries, excellent industries, they don't televise that, and it's kind of an interesting perspective. But yeah. I guess the reason why is, if you think about it, no, none of these movies would be where they are if they didn't have the fans that they have, and yet blockbusters are not nominated year on year so yeah it's a little it's a little foolish man it's a little foolish you'd hope that again like the 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 point of the oscars is to encompass the film industry and you are just not doing that so it's a little it's dumb it's disappointing yeah and you know what movie they that uh, everyone kind of thought would win best picture the year it was uh the year it came out uh no it's it's the greatest Grossing the largest grossing film of all time, Adrian. Oh, Avatar. Yeah. Ugh. Like if Avatar was in the running to potentially win Best Picture, thank God it, again, Hurt Locker won. But think about it. I don't hate Avatar, but Avatar is not a better I movie do. than Spider Man No Way Home. No. Spider Man No Way Home is better narrative. Uh, like it's arguably got better CG now, but that's the, it's irrelevant. But the better narrative is a huge piece of the puzzle for this particular film. Mm-hmm. It's the end of an, like a weird era. It pulled three generations of like Spider-Man villains into it. It 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 really thought itself through. It's it's quite a masterful film, just like Endgame was. But again, Endgame wasn't nominated, was whereas Avatar was, and neither was Spider-Man. No way. Mm-hmm. It's just puzzling. But anyway, whatever. Do you think? I mean, like the only reason I can see like Avatar being nominated is because like James Cameron was attached. You know, and James Cameron makes these like great like i mean the titanic you know as an example is like a masterpiece he makes blockbusters he though yeah but titanic is kind of a blockbuster honestly it's designed to be a blockbuster Mm -hmm. it's a big movie sure but that's like i don't know that's kind of like i guess almost like dune i guess i don't know dune yeah by the way just to go back for a moment not to disparage don't look up like the adam mckay film i really love that movie it's i don't understand what critics are smoking (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, what's happening with that? That movie's amazing. So I'm really, really confused. Yeah, I still got to watch that. Oh, I forgot completely. Sorry. I forgot you didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ken Ken watched it too, and he was saying he really liked it, and he was kind of confused Yeah, by the rating. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, it is what it is. You're not going to win this. No. Uh, another thing that I do want to bring up, though, is just the animated feature film list. Okay. Uh, I haven't heard of this Flea movie, um, so I kind of want to look into it. But I've watched, uh, like... Encanto, Luca, uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon, and uh, yeah. again, all those movies well deserved, I, I think, um, to be nominated. But uh, but I really hope uh, the Mitchells versus the Machine wins. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, yeah, I really love that movie. Yeah, I when I was looking through the nominations list. I'm like, okay, when we do this story on the podcast, Adrian will point out that Mitchells versus the Machines should win that category. <laughs> You guessed right, man. You guessed right. That's another thing to mention too. So there was a, quite a few years in which a lot of the animated films from Pixar, as an example, were being nominated for Best Picture. Mm-hmm. Nothing animated here that's nominated. Why maybe couldn't Mitchell's versus the Machines be nominated for Best Picture? Like, there's a, again, there's a lot to be desired. I think it should really be encompassing of every category. Again, mm-hmm. beating a dead horse. So I'll, I'll stop. Beating off a dead horse. Yeah. It's just very strange. Why do you want that to be the phrase? <laughs> I don't know. It makes me laugh. Okay. <laughs> little things in life, man. I just want to find enjoyment. I don't okay. Know. Anyway, sure. But uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That uh, drive my car movie that is like a Japanese uh, made movie. I really want to watch that. It's playing at Princess this week. Okay. I could try to yeah. make it out to that. Mm-hmm. Maybe choose day. Maybe. Maybe. Because uh, apparently yeah. it's really good, and I'm curious. I'm curious. I really want to see King Richard, man. Didn't see King Richard. Coda is a Apple TV Plus movie, mm-hmm. so that's easy to see. 
if we want to catch that because I think the only ones we're missing. Oh no, we're missing quite a few actually. We're missing Belfast right now. We're missing King Richard, and we're missing uh, Drive My Car and Coda. Yeah, and then I'm also so. missing The Power of the Dog and Don't Look Up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, man. My parents watched The Power of the Dog the other day. My dad didn't like it, but my mom did. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give The Power of the Dog a watch. I don't know. That one's the one that's winning the most awards, mm-hmm. like for throughout the award season, like. Oscars unrelated. Anyways, number two, the story oh. number two, Adrian, as followed by publication The Hollywood Reporter, Disney-owned streaming service Hulu has revived the animated science fiction series Futurama for another 20 episodes. Futurama was previously canceled twice. It was first canceled after five seasons at Network Fox, and then a second time after being revived by Comedy Central for three more seasons. Original series creator Matt Groening and David X. Cohen are on board to produce the revival with much of the original cast back to reprise their characters. Notable actors, Katie Seagal and Billy West, return as Leela and Fry, respectively, with Bender actor John DiMaggio currently in talks to also make his return as the fan-favorite robot. To speak to his excitement for the revival, co-creator Matt Groening said, quote, It's a true honor to announce the triumphant return of Futurama one more time before we get cancelled abruptly again, unquote. (laughs) While co-creator David X. Cohen stated, quote, I'm thrilled to have another chance to think about the future or really anything other than the present, unquote. Mm-hmm. Adrian, I am not a big Futurama fan, so I'm no? very curious what you uh, what you think of this. Um, you don't really watch The Simpsons, though. It's just uh, Futurama, right? Correct. Like, yeah. Or traditionally, yeah. No. Yeah, I watched you know I watched like Simpsons as a kid, but I never really like loved The Simpsons. I watched quite a few episodes, I'm sure, but. Probably not in like yeah. the grand scheme of things. They're at like 38 seasons or whatever the fuck. Um, but Futurama yeah. was a little bit more um, edible. <laughs> One way to put it. Uh, because there just wasn't as much. And I don't think I've watched every single episode of Futurama. But I've definitely seen most of it, I would argue. Like it would cool. air like all the time on like Teletoon when I was younger. And I would, yeah, just watch it all. You know, maybe I missed a couple episodes here and there for a few seasons. But I definitely recall like watching you know, some of the the big episodes, including the the series finale. And it's interesting because I remember Futurama, like off the top of my head, like I don't remember exactly how it ended, but I remember being very satisfied with the ending and it having almost like a complete ending. So it's it's interesting that they're bringing this back. Um, and it's nice to see the return of most of the, uh, you know, actors coming back to play their respective characters. However, you know, John DiMaggio, although he's currently in talks, him not being announced as you know confirmed yet is a little bit worrisome because if he isn't coming back i almost feel like there's not much of a point like you you want to bring everyone back i think that's the main thing and that's that's what's going to drive everyone back in there and don uh, sorry uh, don dimaggio uh john dimaggio uh his 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 work as bender is very you know memorable like his voice is just it is that character i can hear it in my head right now and it's kind of funny as well because a lot of the advertisements um, for uh, this Futurama revival, like Hulu posters and stuff like that, feature Bender as a character. And it's kind of like – it's kind of ironic <laughs> that they're using those um, without him, again, being fully confirmed back. Um, Just to speak to that, mm-hmm. John DiMaggio has been trending like Bendergate is trending on Twitter right now like it's been trending over the last few days because john dimaggio is in talks but they obviously they're advertising it with again bender i was gonna say bender's face but bender's body i guess in animated form very strange way to say that uh but he was he's kind of been the advertising as you kind of mentioned Mm -hmm. he's not even (laughs) confirmed at all and fans are pretty frustrated so they're voicing their concerns on twitter and various social media outlets and then there was something weird apparently Bender was put out as a casting call. Oh. Apparently. Allegedly. So they were maybe going to recast the role. Even though he kind of seems to want to do it because he's reposting a lot of these posts that people are putting on Twitter about how it's ridiculous that he's not already cast. He's the most Mm. important part of the cast in some people's eyes. And so it's very strange. It's a very weird drama that's happening with with this. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have as much investment because I haven't seen this, but I, I did follow that part. Before I wrote the story, I wrote this kind of this blurb, like the, the, the story, and then I was looking into the John DiMaggio thing just to mm-hmm. see if he was 
was confirmed at any point during this week, and that just never happened throughout the week. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's odd because yeah, like if he wants to come back, like why wouldn't you just bring him back? Like maybe it's money. Is he asking for too much money. Like I don't know. It's it's a weird it, one. It, it could be money. That could be the the deal. I just feel like this show it would probably be dead in the water if they don't bring him back. <laughs> like not. Not that he is like the most important character in in the show, but again, it's just such a reputable, like such a recognizable voice and character. It just it would feel out of place, and I think it would be a, a like a big hit um, to like the show if they don't bring him back. It's just I don't know. It's kind of confusing, and I know like John DiMaggio. He it's weird because he's like I I think he is still working with like Matt Groening on like that uh, Netflix series Disenchantment, and if I recall, like I think he plays a character in that. And um, I don't know. I I just don't understand what's what's the hold up here. Why they why they just haven't brought him back? I don't know. It's it's a weird. Yeah, one. I'm not I, sure. I hope they I hope they resolve it. The, the, the fact that they put the casting call out if that's happened is kind of mm-hmm. kind of a slight. Yeah, because they're looking for somebody who can sound like Bender. It's like a Bender-like voice is what they're looking for apparently in the casting call. Again, how true this is is kind mm-hmm. of more rumor than completely confirmed. But it was like so, somebody in the industry, like who who is a voice actor, has kind of seen that, and they were kind of pissed off because that's the case. Mm-hmm. He, he was saying, "I have a pretty good Bender, but it's nowhere close to John DiMaggio." So, like, what's the point? Yeah. So, yeah, and and then they they bring out the concept that like voice actors aren't really respected as much as, you know, live action actors. And we, we talk, uh, I mean, we, we really appreciate voice mm-hmm. acting and yeah. all that because especially cause we play a lot of video games. And so mm-hmm. those two, the two, I feel like those, these two industries kind of collide quite a bit, but oh, definitely. Um, we, we really appreciate people like Troy Baker, mm-hmm. um, or Laura Bailey, uh, you know, Ashley Burch like is probably my favorite voice actor of all time. <laughs> Of course, uh, like Ashley Birch, who, who's in like um, Mythic Quest, yeah. but she's also in Horizon Forbidden West, which is the game coming up this oh, week. I, I thought maybe you were going to by accident say, let's watch it on Friday for watching uh, Go to the Movies to see um, uh, Drive My Car. Oh, no, not going to happen. And I was going to be like, no, I don't think so, buddy, because <laughs> your, your most anticipated game of 2022 is coming out. But yeah, again, this is a very weird situation. And yeah, the disrespect to John DiMaggio seems to be there, I guess. But maybe he is asking for an outrageous amount of money. We don't know what the negotiations are behind closed doors. Like these types of things can get like out of hand on the perspective of fans. Like they can start like getting real riled up. Maybe he's asking for a stupid, outrageous amount of money because mm-hmm. he knows how important he is. He's like, got, he's kind of like, he holds the cards. Yeah. But maybe they're saying, no, you don't have to hold any cards. It's like a, power power contest a power struggle yeah who knows who knows what's happening yeah but uh hopefully they resolve it and they do bring him back because i again i know how much you people love him so anyway i do i do love him okay then adrian number three <gasps> according to deadline amazon prime video has acquired the rights to the upcoming ridley scott executive produced blade runner tv series the new show will be set 50 years after the events of director Denis Villeneuve's 2017 film blade runner 2049 it will be called Blade Runner 2099. Wow. Carry the one, 50 plus 2049. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, good. Shining Girls showrunner Silka Luisa has been hired on as the showrunner for the new series. With original Blade Runner director Ridley Scott potentially up for directing some episodes depending on the timeline for development. Deadline has heard that Amazon is keen on getting this project off the ground as soon as possible by fast-tracking scripts and by starting to plan for potential production dates in the relatively near future. Blade Runner is a neo-noir science fiction series that is based upon the Philip K. Dick novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? The story generally follows Los Angeles police officers and the rogue android replicants that they are in the process of hunting down. The overall Blade Runner film and TV franchise rights are owned by production company Alcon Entertainment, who has ramped up their Blade Runner adaptations and sequels since their purchase of the property in 2011. Adrian. We talked about this actually as a main story many uh, weeks ago Mm -hmm. about how Ridley Scott is making both an Alien TV series and a Blade Runner one. And now this is officially kind of happening at Amazon. Yeah. What are you thinking of that? Um, Well, I guess like on on the point of it happening at Amazon, it's a little bit surprising because like Blade Runner, Runner, the IP, I guess, isn't it owned by Warner Brothers? Like they did distribute 
Blade Runner 2049 in, in the original, if I recall correctly. I might be wrong about that one. That's so, just the deal I, I, I'm guessing that Alcon Entertainment made at the time. Fair enough. Whatever was most convenient for them. Sorry, who's running Adult Swim? Who owns that? Do you know? Um, AT&T. Oh, it is Warner Brothers as well. So yeah, they've had a long-standing relationship with Warner Brothers. I mentioned Adult Swim because um, Blade Runner Black Lotus is an animated series. It's an anime, actually, that's mm. uh, based in the Blade Runner universe, I think in 2033 or something like that. Yeah. So that's a thing for sure, too. It follows a replicant of some sort that's on the run, mm. I guess. So that's another thing. So yeah, that's a good point. Warner Brothers is kind of um been pretty involved throughout i think ridley scott also is um a fan of warner brothers and what they do in some way too mm. so i think that that maybe has something to do with it but in this case alcon shopped it to amazon they were shopping this series around when um apparently when ridley scott teased it and they he said that the the bible for the blade runner tv series had been written like the Mm-hmm. the overall outline of what's going to happen in that TV series for the, I think eight episodes or 10 episodes. Mm-hmm. And so when he said that basically it was, again, it went through like a bit of a bidding war from what I understood from what deadline wrote in this article. Mm-hmm. So it seems like that's kind of what happened and Amazon won and Amazon's got a lot of money mm-hmm. as proven with the Lord of the Rings TV series. Yeah. Jesus. So, <laughs> which by the way, the TV st- that we would not, know it i guess because this our episode launches on monday but the day before on super bowl sunday the trailer for that show aired mm-hmm. which i i just wonder where the production went like in terms of money like what do they spend that much money on like we know we, they spend a lot of money on the rights for the the number of seasons that they end up doing but i'm just so curious because they didn't spend it on actors the acting like the cast list as we've discussed before for that lord of the rings series is just a bunch of people we've never seen before. So mm-hmm. I'm curious what on earth that show is going to be like. But Amazon, again, they have they just keep ramping up really cool productions. And I'm very interested to see a Blade Runner TV series. I just love the feeling of everything, everything that I've seen from Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. Like the first Blade Runner is fantastic. 2049 is amazing as well. And Denis Villeneuve just does such a good job in everything he makes. And uh, I'm so interested to see what happens with this. I haven't obviously watched Shining Girls. I don't think that's out yet. So no, it's not. It's uh, I think they just released a trailer like a like a week ago. It's like an, it's an Apple TV Plus original, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So I'm curious. But uh, yeah, no, it, it, I am curious because Silka Luisa, she doesn't have much else. Yeah, because she did uh, a thing called Strange Angel that she was a writer for back in 2018, and another thing called The Wildling. The the wilding in 2016 and then she wrote a movie called to the bone in 2013 but other than that she doesn't have her name attached to anything so i wonder she must have really pitched hard Mm -hmm. she must have a pretty good idea of what she wanted to do and ridley scott liked it i guess yeah so that's cool cool. i I hope this turns out to be really great like i'm definitely gonna watch this like hell yeah man I'm, i'm super into this i want more blade runner uh i still gotta watch that anime the the black lotus one i just don't think it was particularly well reviewed if i recall correctly and i don't know where we can watch it like on a streaming service but uh, is adult swim content on crave i don't think so it is and it isn't because i wouldn't i know because then i would have watched uh, rick and morty and oh, i'd be yeah. honestly just so annoying that i can't watch that yeah. i wonder if it's on like stack tv or some dumb shit like that maybe black lotus is not that badly reviewed on rotten tomatoes is 67 percent yeah but the audience didn't really love it. It said 15 59%. I almost said 15. 59% on yeah. on audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So, I don't know. It did look good though. The tra- the trailer for that, the way it the, there's a certain lighting effect that I just really love in the Blade Runner mm. films. Uh, that Denis Villeneuve and, and uh both Denis Villeneuve and Ridley Scott. They they change they have different styles of filmmaking, but I just there's something about that lighting. It's the reason I also not to talk too much about video games, but I really like Cyberpunk 2077 because of that's be, really because of how excited I was after seeing 2049. Like I just think that Blade Runner 2049 is just brilliant. Mm-hmm. And th- there's just something about those that world that's so intriguing and dark, neo noir as they call it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it's really awesome lighting and all that stuff. Uh, Blade Runner Black Lotus, uh, it's available with a Stack TV subscription. So I guess Adult Swim is on Stack TV here in Canada. 
Which Stock TV is related to Amazon in some way, isn't it? Uh, it's like a channel you can get through Amazon, I believe, yeah. Hmm. That's how I watched um, Rick and Morty. I just did like the free trial and binged it. But like Stack TV is fucking stupid. It's expensive. I think it's like 10, 15 bucks a month. And they, a- they oh. have an ad in the middle of every episode, like a 30-second commercial in the middle of every single episode. You pay $15. And you still see an ad. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. ridiculous. Like after doing that like free trial, I was like, I'm literally never paying for this. I don't give a fuck if you have Food Network on there, man. I'm paying shit. Huh? That's a really weird choice on yeah. their part. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. But whatever. Mm. Whatever. Okie dokie. Yeah. Now onto the montage, a sequence of our show in which I briefly present the week's smaller news stories as Adrian delivers a brisk verdict. Number one. As Publication Deadline reports, streaming service Amazon Prime Video has renewed action series Reacher only three days after its first season's debut. Upon the launch of all Season 1 episodes on February 4th, 2022, Reacher managed to become one of Amazon's most watched series over a set 24-hour period in the United States. Wow, pretty interesting. Um, it's, again, we talked about Amazon Prime like kind of fl- flip-flopping and experimenting on how they're releasing their content. Like with the boys, it was like three episodes and then week to week. And now with this Reacher show, they just dropped it all at once. It's interesting. Mm, indeed. Number two, as Deadline reports, the first three episodes for the Michael Mann-directed HBO crime drama Tokyo Vice, starring Ansel Elgort and Ken Watanabe, will premiere on HBO Max on April 7th, 2022. Oh, this looks good. Maybe. It does look good to me. It's on HBO, which is great. But the three episodes launch the first day, and then the next weeks, it launches two episodes each. Oh! So again, HBO. I just wanted to point that out because you just you just mentioned Amazon was experimenting, but here we are with HBO experimenting. That's cool. That's cool. Kind of hope they do that with Last of Us. Oh, me too. Holy shit. God, I can't wait for The Last of Us. Number three. According to publication Variety, a TV series adaptation for author R.L. Stein's Goosebumps novels has been greenlit by streaming service Disney Plus and will debut with a 10-episode first season. I never really read much of the Goosebumps books, but the TV show scared the shit out of me that aired on, like, YTV. Hmm. Yeah, me too. Number four. According to Deadline, Greenland actor Gerard Butler has just been cast in the film adaptation for Dexter novelist Jeff Lindsay's novel, Just Watch Me. The film's script is being written by nobody screenwriter Derek Kolstad. Ooh. I don't know anything about this book, to be fair, but I do know Derek Kolstad does a great job with nobody. So I'm in, I'm into this. Number five, as Variety reports, Zack Snyder's upcoming science fiction space fantasy adventure film Rebel Moon will star actors Sophia Botella, Charlie Hunnam, Jaiman Honsu, Ray Fisher, Duna Bay, Gina Malone, Staz Nair, E. Duffy, Charlotte Maggie, and Sky Yang. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very stoked for this uh, movie. This is uh, essentially that failed Zack Snyder or um, Star Wars pitch. Um, that he's just making it into his own thing. I'm very excited to see what he's going to come up with with this. Maybe it's also rated R. Ooh. Number six. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Gladiator actor Russell Crowe has been cast alongside Tenet actor Aaron Taylor Johnson in Sony's Spider-Verse-based Craven the Hunter film. Wow, this is so exciting. I can't wait. I can wait. Number seven. As Variety reports, Netflix's gritty Marvel TV series collection will be leaving Netflix on February 28th, 2022. This means that the rights to the Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, The Punisher, and Iron Fist TV series is reverting back to Disney, with no currently announced plans for a new platform for these series. This is a surprising one, honestly. I wasn't expecting this, and I'm very curious where it's going to go. Um, I guess we'll find out, like, if they're going to do Star, if they put it on, you know, Disney Plus Star. And if they do that, if they bring back Daredevil, I guess we know where it's going to air. Number eight. As reported by Deadline, the Disney Plus TV series Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is set to follow actor Ewan McGregor's version of Jedi Master Kenobi post the Star Wars prequel series, has been set for a May 25th, 2022 premiere date. ooh I'm excited for this one, baby. Number nine. As Variety reports, the Bob Odenkirk starring Breaking Bad spinoff series Better Call Saul will debut the first half of its final season on April 18th, 2022, with the second part set to premiere on July 11th, 2022. This is my most anticipated TV show of the year by a mile. Number 10. As Deadline reports, Ted Lasso showrunner Bill Lawrence has re-signed with Warner Brothers TV for an additional five-year nine-figure deal to enable him to continue to develop various television projects for the company. Wow, that's a lot of money. Bonus number 11. (gasps) Wow. According to Variety, NBC Universal's 
Peacock streaming service is developing both an abominable and a Megamind sequel animated TV series. Interesting. I haven't seen Abominable, but I uh, watched Megamind, and I quite like Megamind. It's fun. Uh, Will Ferrell, I hope, comes back for it. And that concludes the montage. Bah, Will Ferrell coming back. Montage. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Adrian, this week was pretty wild for stories, Mm -hmm. and it's been like this I don't remember a week in which I had this many stories that I kind of had to cut out. And that's why I added, obviously, a bonus 11 there because we normally do 10 montage stories. It's weird. I don't know what's going on, but I I wonder if this is just going to keep going like this as the content war like continues. Mm -hmm. As these streaming – so many streaming services are trying to go head to head to head to head. Like Paramount Plus didn't really exist at this time last year or or did they – I guess they had CBS All Access, but they didn't really ramp up their production as much as they did last week. And that's why there was a lot of Paramount Plus series that we talked about. It's strange how much content each one of these damn streaming services is making. And Disney Plus, I think recently was saying that they're they're ramping up their, for this quarter alone, they're ramping up their production to like an extra billion dollars. Or something like that. That's wild. For this quarter, like for this set quarter for Disney. And I, I was just looking at that. I, I know they're going to use that for ESPN as well and various other spots. It won't just be uh, for like Disney Plus kind of fiction mm-hmm. series. They'll probably do it for nonfiction stuff as well. But I just find that very odd. Like they're just all really, really going hard. And I wonder who's going to get lost in the shuffle, if any. Do you think they're all going to survive this? You got Stars, which is your favorite one. You got Netflix, Amazon Prime Video. We got um, Crave doesn't count because it's Canadian, but we got HBO Max, Peacock, uh, freaking uh, Paramount a- Plus, which is just mentioned. AMC Plus. Unbelievable. Yeah, like yeah. it's insane. And Hulu's kind of separated in the States too, but I think it's going to eventually probably just be completely consolidated. Mm-hmm. It's pretty nuts. Apple TV Plus too, which Man. by the way is really ramping up content. And they have like – they have money to throw around clearly because the production values on every show is just top notch. And they throw in the craziest actors, except for John Hamm, mm-hmm. into every one of these series, which is crazy. Anyway, I just, uh, I'm just wondering, like, when is it ever going to come to a four? Like, is it ever going to be too much? But I guess we'll see. I don't know what you think. Who will fall? Will, will someone fall? Do you think one of these companies... I mean, maybe I, they'll just get scooped up. Maybe yeah. Disney will buy. Maybe Warner Brothers will buy. Like they obviously just bought Discovery, so maybe they'll mm-hmm. buy one of the other guys, like NBC Universal or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just going to be mergers and acquisitions. We don't. Yeah. Like, it's hard to know what's going to happen, but I feel like it's there's almost too much consolidation choice. There's too much <laughs> yeah. choice. Oh yeah, yeah, that that too. But I, we can't. Like, how do you like? I want to see the show Yellow Jackets. Mm-hmm. Right? We talked about that weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I also want to see another 10 other shows. I'm behind on like FX's Fargo. I'm behind. I wanted to watch Devs. Mm-hmm. I wanted to watch Mr. Robot season four. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched that yet. Oh, I've got like fuck. 20 shows that I want to watch. And there's all these other TV series like Yellowstone is an example. That's an amazing show that I haven't got around to. That mm-hmm. There's just no time for one man to do that at all. And we spend a lot of time watching content. So I just wonder about like the average person probably watches two shows maybe, right? Mm-hmm. I don't there's know. There's no time to even go back. Like Daredevil is coming off air, so I'm like rushing through to finish Daredevil season two and three because I just I want to feel to finish it because I don't know if they're maybe going to take maybe it's going to be a six month hi- hiatus before they throw Daredevil back on yeah. a streaming service. We don't have no idea because there's no announced plans. Anyways, I digress. It's just very very strange how much content there is, and I feel like every week for the last three weeks is just one up themselves. We've had like thirty potential news stories to choose from. Uh, you're like reading a novel each time you have to choose the the three top stories there. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult because I don't know how to read. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah. But you can just get Siri to read it to you. That would yeah. be one way to do it. It's true. Adrian, what do you got for me? What do you got for me, buddy? I got new releases for you, Simon. Okay. What are they? Uh, so this is for the week of February 14th to February the 20th. That is a Monday to a Sunday, as per usual, Simon. And the first few movies are coming out on Tuesday, February the 15th. The Ooh. first movie is called Here Before, and it's confirmed by Movie Insider in the Apple TV app. It's a video-on-demand movie about a new family moving in next to a woman. Um, and and be- because of this, 
this 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 brings up painful memories of of this woman's deceased daughter and and that family's daughter that moves in is doing some weird shit hmm is this a horror movie i don't know okay it seems like kind of like a thriller of sorts um, but I don't know for sure. Mm. I don't watch the trailer. I just I just uh, read the write up. Okay, let's look. Let's look here before here before. It is labeled as a drama. Just a just a drama. Speaking of uh, horror things, just briefly mm-hmm. horror things. Like uh, you talk about goosebumps in yeah. the montage. I have the, I have like specific memories of watching very very scary goosebumps episodes that i feel like have scarred me for life like i i wasn't ready but i wasn't mature enough to watch them mm-hmm. and they legitimately i still remember them and i i can't remember if it was in like a really terrible nightmare i had or if it was a show an episode i watched of goosebumps or if it happened in, in real life yeah there's some crazy episodes of that show that Man. i just there's this one episode where this kid goes missing or something like that and then eventually he finds his way back home mm-hmm. and he tries to escape these like some kind of, I don't know what they were, the FBI agents or aliens or something. And, like, and he escapes, goes in his room and somehow he, he runs up the stairs. And if he doesn't make it up the stairs, he won't escape these goons. I don't know if that's an episode of a series, The Goosebumps, or if that is a thing that I had a nightmare about. Like I had to make it to the top of the stairs of my house to my bedroom or these goons would catch me. And I don't know why it's so frightening. There's just something about the imagery, the way it was filmed. Anyways, I digress. But yeah. I don't think you remember that episode because of... no. I don't. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Yeah. How you're um, reacting here? Anyway, yeah. anyway, Adrian, what else is coming out? Wait, wait, wait real quick. Did you ever watch? Uh, are you afraid of the dark? Is yeah, it- that's the other one. So yeah. I, I don't know if it was Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, that, that maybe one, that one was scared too. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, as a kid, I wonder if I went back now and watched those, if they wouldn't nearly be as scary as they they were for me. I imagine they're probably not that scary. I remember them being very scary. Like, I know. It was the scariest thing I ever watched. <laughs> and that might have been why I didn't watch horror after. Because oh. I'm like, why do I want to be scared? Because the narrative was like cool and all. The narratives were okay. But they yeah. weren't like, they weren't enticing me to come and, and watch them. But I, I like kind being of, scared, Simon. I know. You've said many times on this podcast. It gives me a nice rush. Yeah. Adrenaline rush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Adrian, what else is coming out this week, my friend? Evinced. Evinced. Is the next movie coming out? Did I pronounce? Is that a word? I've never even seen that word. Evinced. Um, e v i n c. Evinced. Yeah, it is. They reveal the presence of a quality or feeling. His huh. letter. His letters evince the excitement he felt at undertaking this journey. Wow. There you go. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's good to know. But yeah, Evinced is a movie coming out, and this is confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand movie, and it's about a mysterious masked man who can tell the future Uh-oh. that teams up with a detective to save it. Oh. Bun-a-bun. Okay. Next up is a movie called Run and Gun. It's confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand movie, and it's about a guy that leaves his life of crime and then just gets forced back in for one last job and shit goes bad, Simon. And I feel like I've... Uh, one last job. And, and I feel like that's uh, many movies I've talked about during our, our, our 85 episode run. Yeah. yeah. Very possibly. Mm-hmm. That Blacklight movie from last week with mm-hmm. Liam Neeson, I like when Liam Neeson's in action movies, but mm-hmm. uh, man, he doesn't know how to pick them sometimes. You uh, know? Is, it, is it not done well? Is it, uh, it's a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes. Three! <laughs> It's awful. Oh my god! I just like him in an action role. He's great, and he doesn't do as many lately. I saw this actually in the pre-show for West Side Story, um, minus uh, good old um, Tanner's Tanner's Ed, but Tanner Z. Uh, unfortunately, Cineplex is Canadian Treasure. Let Canadian Treasure Tanner Z go. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the pre-show, they just have random clips, and they had a clip of him talking about Blacklight, and he's saying he's almost seventy, and he does the he likes to do the odd action film and mm. i was like liam neeson's almost 70 years old it's wild he does not look like he's almost 70 to me maybe i'm no i don't know 70 is a new 60 or something yeah. 55 <laughs> for yeah for liam neeson here but anyway i hope he keeps doing action movies because I, I am always entertained by them but i mean i shouldn't say always i probably would hate that movie a movie that's three percent of rotten tomatoes it's actually six percent simon i just checked it's gone up oh okay so. cool it's it's twice as good as you thought it was. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what else is watching? Help! This week. That made no sense. But what else is coming out? What else is watching this week? Help! 
Okay. It's confirmed by Movie Insider in the Apple TV app. This is a Vinny on Demand movie, and it's about uh, like a woman. Yeah. And that, you know, after, and you know, after. Like a woman. Like a, it's after a painful breakup. Like, but not exactly a woman. Like a woman. Like a woman. Man, I feel like a woman. I don't even know if that's the lyrics of that song. I don't even know who that is. Is that Carrie Underwood? Hell, I need somebody. Keep it going. No, no, I'm just, I'm keeping it going. You're next in line, so you have to pick a line of this description and now sing a song from it obviously you keep it going jeez take a take a cue bro um you don't have anything you got nothing yeah i got nothing i'm just gonna continue after a painful breakup a woman goes to the countryside with her (laughs) friend and her boyfriend but then shit goes bad in this one too you just read that and you didn't notice that you made an error or I did. I did. I stuck with it. But why, though? I don't know. The audience is listening, though. I don't know, Simon. I just thought it, I would do it. We have people listening to this podcast. I mean, theoretically. <laughs> there are people theoretically listening to this right now. Not right now, but now for them. Sorry, if I had said next movie, you would have just continued and not mentioned the mistake? The do the countryside? She goes do the countryside. It's a capital D for do as well. What? What were you thinking on that? I don't understand. I used voice to text. Hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, Adrian, let's move on. It's too long talking about do. Do, do. <laughs> Classic. Thursday, February 17th is the next day with movies coming out. And the first one is called Erax. Erax. This is a Netflix original movie about monsters that leap from a storybook that an aunt reads to her niece that unleashes <gasps> mayhem in the real world. <laughs> no. Yeah. Next up is Forgive Us Our Trespasses, which is a Netflix original movie about a boy with a limb difference that makes a daring decision while running from Nazis hunting him down. A limb difference? Yeah, I don't know what that means. I just read that and I was like, what's that? Maybe his limbs oh, are different. Oh, you copied it. Yeah. I didn't copy it. Okay. I just didn't know what a limb difference was, so I didn't know like how to adjust the meaning. You didn't think to look it up? No, nah, I didn't feel like it. It's too much effort. All right. Fistful of Vengeance is up next, and this is a Netflix original movie. And it's a continuation of the show Woo Assassins, which is another Netflix original show. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when that trailer came out for that Woo Assassin's show. I was like, this doesn't look good. You know what's interesting? If I'm recalling correctly, Fistful of Gen- Vengeance uh, stars um, Eco U- U.S. U- yeah. U.S. I'm sorry if I'm mm. s- screwing up his name terribly, but he's the star of Raid Redemption. Yeah, he's also the star of the Woo cool. Assassin's TV show that this is a continuation of. Yeah, so w- was Woo As- Assassin's not good? I don't know. Or you just saw the trailer and thought it wasn't good? Yeah, it just didn't look good from the trailer is what I said. So I thought maybe you also did a little bit of research to find out if it was bad. I know what you said. I'm listening to you. Well, it's it feels like you don't actually listen to. That's it. how I call it. The fact that you said, "Oh, a, a break, a painful breakup. A woman goes do the countryside." I, I'm hearing perfectly what you're saying. The nonsense that's coming from your mouth. Woo Assassins is an 83 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, Simon. Yeah, take that, Adrian. Huh? Like it does, like I don't understand. It's not a huge deal. I just said that it didn't look good to me. Like if it's good, that's great. Okay, well that's great. You just saw one trailer. Yeah, you you didn't do any due diligence due diligence whatsoever. You just uh, I'm stating you, my opinion, Simon. Do you understand what an opinion is? <laughs> Instead of doing due diligence, you you went do the countryside. Is what you did. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? You you're a do do. That's what you are. A big oh wow that was tr- wow fucking original yeah thank wow. you very original yeah just like avatar which isn't original because it's just copied pocahontas and ferngold all right stop riffing what's the next movie coming out the next movie coming out is coming out on friday february 18th it's downfall the case of boeing which is a netflix original documentary mm. about the plane manufacturer mm. yes that made that those planes yeah the planes that crashed. Yes. No, I got it. Yeah. People died, Simon. I, I, I'm aware. Why are you so specific about this particular one? The, the, the friggin' title tells, the, tells mm. the whole story. What's the next movie coming out? Rabbids Invasion Special Mission to Mars. This is a Netflix original based movie on ba- that's based on the Ubisoft game. 
It's based on the UV soft game. I'm sorry. Is he? Are you think that you reading this nonsense, this terribly written, terribly grammatically written garbage, is entertaining to the people in New, New Zealand? In New Zealand, definitely. Everywhere else, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think we're the number two most popular podcast in New Zealand because of me. No, because I don't think you've ever made this many grammatical errors in one episode. This is the worst episode for grammatical errors that we have had. Mm-hmm. And it's all you. It's not all me. You just, you just edit out all the ones you make. You're reading these write-ups going, blah, 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 blah. And then you just edit it out, pretending that you're perfect, but you're not. Whoa, 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 whoa. made millions That's of not... mistakes. Millions. No, no, no. I've made mistakes. I'm not talking about, the, the, yeah, there's mistakes, but I wrote, if you read my actual write-ups, they're all correct. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah? Wh- where on earth did I write, go do the countryside? You didn't. I wrote that. In any capacity or anything as close to as terrible as that kind of mistake. Move on, Adrian. Let's, let's move on because we don't see eye to eye on this, okay? Based on Ubisoft game. Based on Ubisoft game. Yeah, okay. You yeah. friggin' five-year-old boy. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Classic. Wow. Classic. That comeback was as bad as your writing skills. That comeback was as uh, as bad as your fucking face. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that from a mile away. Eh, gotcha. These were 100% predictable. I was being polite to you earlier. I gave you compliments this episode, but you're just a fucking bully. Like what? What did you compliment me on? I don't remember. I said something and you're like, wow, that's so nice. Yeah. I don't remember why. I called you. I don't know. I said something positive. Wasn't that memorable, apparently. Anyway. Well, I I don't remember anything. (laughs) Like almost ever. (laughs) What other movie is coming out this week? Do your damn job. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They should they Again? They should, they should switch this to Guelph Chainsaw Massacre because I'm going over to your house with a chainsaw saw. No, I'm just kidding. This is a Netflix original movie, and it's another horror reboot movie. It's a reboot mm. of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's a Netflix original one. Hasn't this been rebooted like three times? Probably. Yeah. But so has Halloween, to be fair. Mm. The Halloween franchise. Yeah, but then it went back into its old roots. And linked up the Halloween franchise to the first movie ever made, didn't it? Yeah, but it like it's still they rebooted it multiple times. It, it almost always links back to the first movie, except for one of the, the the Rob Zombie reboot. That one doesn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. All right. Um, Pursuit is up next, and this is confirmed by the most reliable source on the internet, m.theheavennumbers.com and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand movie about tough cops searching for a tougher criminal. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, that's the tagline of the movie. Streamline is up next, and this is confirmed by the most reliable source on the internet, m.theheavynumbers.com and the Apple TV app. And this is a video on demand movie about a kid getting ready for a swim meet that could get him into the Olympics. Does he even want it, Simon? Does he even want it? What? Does he even want to get into the Olympics? Oh, I thought you said, but he doesn't even want it. That's what I heard. But does he even want it? But does. Okay. Yeah, enunciate. Enunciate. Adrian. Ah, uh, whatever. Whatever. Uncharted is coming up next. It's confirmed by Cineplex and it's coming to theaters. This is based on the game series of the same name. It's not being reviewed too well, which is not too surprising. <sighs> hmm. Still going to watch it. Still going to watch it, but it doesn't look too good. Yeah. Wait, what's it at now? Like 40 something? I don't know. Starring Tom Holland, directed by Ruben Flusher. 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yikes. Yikes. Ah, uh, yeah. Are we really surprised though? Uh, I am a little bit. I, I know that Ruben Flesher doesn't have the greatest track record. Like, the first Venom movie isn't exactly amazing at all. So, yeah. that's kind of the unsurprising thing. But it has some of the features that would make it a good movie. Like, Tom Holland is blown up lately. Mark Wahlberg, Tom Holland, that chemistry seems to be good based on the trailers. I actually do like the action pieces they're showing in the trailers. I think they could have had a lot of... They would have, they would have had, I feel like, a lot of potential just by mm-hmm. what we've seen. But the issue is, I don't think the narrative is probably good. I don't know. Uh, probably not. You want to see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're going to see it in theaters? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. You don't want to watch it? Uh, yeah, I can go. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not opposed to going to see it. But um, I kind of feel like watching Death on the Nile a little bit more. I do want to watch Death on the Nile as well with actual Candle Army Hammer. And didn't that just come out? It did. That came out, yeah, this past, like last week. Yeah. I kind of want to watch uh, Blacklight, actually. <laughs> Why? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm not. I'm good. Yeah. I love Liam Neeson, but uh, 6% of Rotten Tomatoes is not good. going to be bad. 
Um, Uncharted, it's playing at 710 at both Guelph theaters on Thursday. You're going to go see a movie on Thursday? Well, yeah. I'm not going on Friday. Then you think you're going to be a little bit tired by the time you get home? The game comes out at 12 a.m.? No. Have you heard of coffee, Simon? You're just going to drink coffee at 12 a.m.? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? 12 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, cool. Fine. Yeah. You still get tired through coffee. It's still possible. You'll just be like running on a high. Anyway, Adrian, what else have is coming out Have you heard of cocaine, Simon? <laughs> have you heard of cocaine? Uh, Yeah, I have. I'm not going to do it, but it's an option. Dog is up next, Simon. Okay. It's confirmed by Cineplex, and it's coming to theaters, and it's Channing Tatum with a dog. Okay. That's what this movie's about. Yeah, I saw the trailer. Yeah. Looks okay. Yeah, I don't care. I don't know what it is about dog movies. Uh, like we're like the, it's like a heartfelt movie about a dog. Mm-hmm. I just don't love them. I just hang out with my own dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I I just don't have this. Like I don't know why. As a kid, I liked it okay. I liked Airbud. But man, mm-hmm. this Channing Tatum with a dog movie. It looks kind of heartfelt or whatever. But I just don't. Yeah. What about Marley and Me with Owen Wilson? That's a good movie. That was a good one, but that was very sad. Yeah, I know. I bawled my eyes out. Um, and even that, to be honest, it, it's the same idea. Like I, I feel like they. Mm-hmm. They've lost their luster for me. There's something about it. I like that movie. Anyways, The Cursed is the final movie coming out on Friday, February the 18th. And it's uh, confirmed by Cineplex in the theaters. And this is one of the best horror movies of the year, apparently, according to the poster. This is another movie I'd want to watch, actually. I kind of want to watch this. Do you think it's one of the best horror movies of the year? No. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Actually, probably. It could be. There's only only been like three. And what uh, has been Scream? It would have to be Scream, basically. It's got Scream to beat, I think. Yeah. Scream is such a good movie. God damn. All five of those movies. I really like those movies. Fantastic. I'm a Scream fan now. So yeah, it's one of the best horror movies of the year. Uh, to be fair, yeah. It's like one of the best, possibly. Yeah. I want to watch Antlers as well, which came out last year. It's on Disney Plus too, so I might watch that. I did see that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. And the final movie coming out this week is coming out on Sunday, February the 20th. It's a movie called Don't Kill Me. It's a Netflix original movie about a woman and her lover that die from a drug overdose. But the woman alone wake awakens in a violent world, Simon. Oh, no. 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 Yeah. Hopefully she's all right. Probably not, though. I hope so as well. Yeah. But that's that's all, baby. That's it. That's all. Incredible. Incredible, Adrian. Thank you once again for compiling this list, although terribly written. I do appreciate you taking the time to go through and compile it because you have to look at various sources like m.d.hyphen.ca. m.d.numbers.com, Simon. It's fairly easy to say. Ah, yes, exactly exactly what I said. Um, but yeah, thank you for doing that because I know it takes some work to do and I know I was razzing you before, but I do appreciate your effort. I do. I do indeed. And thank you to Kenneth Stadelboro for writing into us. And if you were to want to write into us, audience, you can do so at spillfocuspodcast at gmail.com. If you want to write us a review, you can do that on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And if you want to subscribe, which would help us greatly, you can subscribe to us on anywhere that really podcasts are available. Um, I thank you again, Adrian, for joining me. Do you have anything to add before we wrap this baby up? Ooh, Simon. Uh, I mean, you can find us on all podcast services. Net, not Netflix, Spotify. Didn't podcast. I just say that exact thing? You weren't listening to anything I just said. I zoned out. I'll be honest with you. I know you did because you just repeated. As soon as I said that, you repeated the same thing I said. Yeah, yeah, it's true. My fireplace is just so beautiful. Maybe you need to rotate your desk away from the fireplace so you don't get distracted. Oh, I'm not on a desk. I'm sitting on a couch. And there's uh, uh, my previously, this was my sock drawer. I, I just wang jangled this together. I'm not like fully. I got to I gotta buy a bunch of shit, man. I'm slowly but surely buying a bunch of I'm stuff. sorry. Sock drawer? It's not really a sock drawer. I just kept socks in here. That's like multiple drawers on it. It's like tall. It's like this little square. You, you're you sitting in a sock drawer to do this podcast? I'm not sitting in a sock drawer. I'm sitting on a couch with a sock drawer in front of me. Okay. That the microphone is sitting on. That is directly in front of my beautiful fireplace. Oh, oh okay. So you've got the sock drawer open and the microphone's no, inside. No, the sock drawer is closed. The top of the sock drawer is a flat, squared surface that the microphone is resting on. It's a dresser. It's, You're talking about a dresser. You're describing a dresser. It's not a Is dresser. Is it a single drawer? No, it's it's four drawers. But the drawers are removable <laughs> drawers that are like this mesh, like a metal. It's like a mesh metal. 
It's you know you know how the you know how the top, you don't know what a dresser is because you're describing a dresser. <laughs> it's not like a regular dresser though. It doesn't look like a dresser. It's more of a it's a metallic like drawers. But it's not one drawer. It's so, it's multiple. There's drawers. multiple. You just said yeah, so there can't be a sock drawer. It's a, that's impossible. It's a sock drawers. Drawers. Okay. Is it because you only put socks in every drawer? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Only socks. One sock per drawer. All right. That's why it's not a socks drawer, Simon. It's a sock you know, drawer. I, I pictured you open the drawer and you put the microphone inside it and you're like <laughs> leaning over the, dre- <laughs> the dresser. It's and not a dresser. The microphone. It's not a dresser. You sound great, by the way. You sound great. So whatever you're doing, man, keep it up. But uh, – <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy just gave me the thumbs up. He's our video uh, audio technician. Yeah. He's like, "Wow, he does sound great today." I hate the guy, but he sounds awesome. Yeah, Jimmy is a piece of shit. Jimmy's actually got a private link to my headset, so he can talk to me directly. I don't know if you know that. So he tells me things about you during the podcast. It's good. I honestly don't even want to hear anything from him. No, no, that's he doesn't want you to hear him either when he's making fun of you. I don't want to. I don't. No, I do. I don't want to hear him more than he doesn't want me to hear him. So I win. Again, he's talking behind, behind your back, so I feel like I'm again, talking behind. I'm talking behind his back as well. He can hear you right now. You're not talking behind his back. He's I'm talking literally behind his back. Okay, I don't know what that means. You're talking to your. Are you, you're thinking. Oh, you're you're using your brain. No, those aren't thoughts behind someone. You don't really say thoughts behind someone's back. You mm-hmm. you're not talking behind his back. You're you're just literally thinking to yourself. Is that what you're saying? No, I mean yes. Yeah, I think too as well. I guess behind people's backs i guess because big brother ain't watching but that's not what we're talking about adrian anyway we got to move on we got to get this show rolled rolled up into a a beautiful rolled carpet as uh my metaphors have been just on point this episode so adrian i say to you now and i say to the audience thank you for listening to the 85th episode of split focus a film and tv podcast my name is simon Edie, and this is adrian pinter signing off it is i adrian pinter signing off and um, you know who else has a sock drawer? It's Batman and Batman v Superman because you need socks to fight crime. And Batman v Superman is a good movie as well. And so is Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon Town City. It's a good movie. It's a great movie even. They're super fun, both of them. Take care. Goodbye. Have a good night. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>